boy, what is all this talk with warmer 40k army tears? Because it's really kind of bringing tears to my eyes. So let's talk about it right after this quick intro. Hey everyone, it's Tasty Taste from Blood of Kittens. And so I want to talk about something that's just really a hot topic for no apparent reason. And it just kind of shows how sad and pathetic we are. We have very few events. Games Workshop has slowed down uh, production and releasing new things. And so there are for all the content cre creators across the interwebs. Airs just really starved for attention. And to add my hypocritical voice to this, let's talk about it. And what the topic is about is army tiers. And as you may have noticed, if you've gone on any Facebook group that's competitive leaning, any YouTube channel that's competitive leaning, you might have noticed that there's just been a dearth in the last, whatever, 10 days of posts about what's the best armies. And I, I get it, you know, clickbait, you want to have tears. Tears are great things to talk about. It's like, oh, my army's this bad, this army's this good. But the amount of it and just the kind of thirsty nature of it just kind of really put me off. But it brings up a kind of good topic about why we place things in tears uh, for 40K and why we really shouldn't care right now if your army sucks or not sucks. Because guess what? We only have a few codexes out for 9th edition right now, and internally, between each other, they're very uh, balanced between each other. So, as we get the codexes rolling out, and I know Games Workshop, you know, to their credit, would probably have liked to have had a, multiple codexes out by now, get the whole range of armies out, but just because of Nurgle's rot going around the world, they were unable to do that, and also some other things like Brexit and various other supply chain issues have caused them not to be able to do what they probably wanted to do and, you know, make us really happy. So, back to the tears. Uh, first off, let's talk about we don't really have the data. If you notice a lot of these tier lists, they had Dark Angels and Death Guard, and number one and two are in the high, like, I'm going to kill everything tier. And that makes sense. They're the newest armies. But we just don't really have the results for it, and it's kind of just like groupthink, kind of meta ether. Like I heard my friends say they're really broken. I'm scared of Mortarian. I'm scared of Inner Circle for Dark Angels, and it's just like we don't really have the stats to prove that. We have a few, you know, competitive channels talking about how they think they're broken, but without the games played, without tournament results, this is really fruitless. And of course, there's terrible tiers, you know, Gene Sierra Cult, things like that. You know, they are bad and they're in a bad place. But for the most part, the middle range is really broad. And to have this discussion about tiers is just really kind of annoying. And what really chapped my hide specifically about it was we should do something about it. Like we should give VP bonus, victory point bonuses to certain armies if you play them in a competitive setting. Now, first off, that's just dumb. And... I, I might be talking like old speak, like, you know, back in like 6th and 7th edition, there was kind of, you know, various talks about this sort of thing about like, oh, we should maybe uh, give bonuses to certain armies because they're just really bad and Games Workshop's not giving them good rules. Or the, But that was when the game was really just broken uh, rules-wise and system-wise. So we don't have the case right now. It's just literally a backlog of releases that are stopping all our armies from being fairly balanced. So to have this discussion about, oh, when I play Genes to the Cult, they should get a 10-point VP bonus to start the game. That's not going to fix anything. You know what's going to fix things is you talking with your opponent about what type of armulus they want to play. If they're bringing Gene Sir Colt and you're bringing the new Death Guard hotness, maybe have a discussion and say, hey, buddy, uh, you're my friend. Let's play a fair game and a fun game. And maybe you don't bring Mortarian. Maybe we bring a Land Raider or something instead of Mortarian or two Land Raiders. And let's see if my Gene Sir Colts can kill some Land Raiders. And that's what's really missing about the discussion is we're trying to have this top-heavy analytical view of being like, let's have points and all this stuff. But with Nurgle's Rot out there, we're not playing in a bunch of events. So there's really no implementation. And by the way, do you really want an RTT to implement bonuses like this? This kind of comp system is just kind of lame, especially when you're only going to be playing against 10 people that you probably already know and play about. So... This really gets back to you discussing with your one bubble friend that you can play a game with and talking to them about how to set up a game. And I just think there's not enough of that in the game. Um, we always kind of deride it as like a narrative thing, like, oh, let's talk about what armies we're going to bring for this narrative story. But it can be added to competitive. You can just be like, hey, you know what? I really want to try out this unit. I don't think it's optimal. Can you tone down your list? Because I just kind of want to see how I can make this unit work. 
And having in that discussion, in that context, you know, just really can give you a really fun game where you're trying units that are not necessarily you think are that good and finding out maybe they are that good or that you found a use from that no one else is looking for. Um, and this also goes for people that you don't maybe want to have that conversation with where you're thinking like, oh, this guy, I don't know, he might be a little passive aggressive or he might have some, you know, some issues. And, you know, you can just be like, hey, I'm beating up on these baby seals all the time. Maybe I should personally tone back my list building to give them a competitive style. And this also, you know, really goes much for, you know, new players, that sort of thing where you're like, hey, you know, what? let's give them a fighting chance because I want them to get invested in Warhammer 40k. So don't take the, you know, the beat list just because your one army, let's just say Death Guard, is just happens to be the new hotness and you're like, oh, I really want to try out this new stuff because I think it's really broken. You know what? Don't do that. Take one unit of brokenness, but don't take the rest broken so you can give your friends a fighting chance if you feel like you're just going to destroy them, especially if their skill level is lower. You don't want to take fight against a lower skill level person plus a terrible army that he's using, and then you have to be a higher skill player and a really uh, shit-kicking army. It's just bad all around. So what this gets back to is really quickly, talk with your opponent. Or if you don't want to talk with your opponent, Self-regulate yourself. This is not that hard. We don't need to have tears and talking about, oh, victory points and all this stuff. It's just lame and stupid. And it's just really clickbaity and just really easy to get people to look at. And I get that. I understand why we had one plot, one place started it and within like days, every single YouTube channel, Reddit post had a discussion about, oh, what army tiers should we have for stuff? Let's have an army tier discussion, but maybe let's wait for at least half the codexes for 9th edition to come out before we have a really deep dive conversation about it because it's constantly changing and it's just not really worth it, especially when we don't have the actual analytics to prove what people are thinking are the best. And I'm not saying they're wrong, they're probably right, but there is no actual analytical proof to say, hey, Death Guard and uh, our Dark Angels are the best armies in the world when we're like, well, uh, there's only one tournament event in New Zealand that says that maybe they are really that good. That doesn't prove anything. So. Let's just tone down on tiers. Let's really tone down on making some comp adjustments for armies and just talk to your opponents. Do your friends a favor and just don't play something that's just going to make them have bad feelsies about their army and about their play experience. Because guess what? We want them playing 40k. We want them to still continue to play 40k. So just be mindful of that and just be a better person. That's basically what I'm saying. Be a better person and maybe just don't click on those articles or videos so much. Unless I'm posting, right? Because I want you to like and subscribe and do all that stuff and uh, click on my clickbait, but not their clickbait, right? Oh, there's enough content around. You can click on everyone's clickbait. But anyway, have a great day, guys. Talk to you later. <laughs>